Here's our top tips for buying any used four wheel drive. When buying used, you're really looking for two main things. Firstly, that it's had an easy life and hasn't been thrashed. And secondly, that it's been looked after and cared for and isn't gonna need any expensive repairs in the near future. There's always gonna be a risk when buying secondhand, but in this video, we're gonna show you proven ways to diagnose what that four wheel drive has been through and warning signs that it's a lemon and you should walk away. People selling a four-wheel drive will hide the truth. Of course, they're not always gonna tell you that they bought the vehicle from the mines or that they take it to the Glasshouse Mountains four-wheel driving every weekend or they flooded it in Cape York. It's important that you do your research on the owner and then compare what they've said to the condition of the vehicle and make a judgment call for yourself. So what do I mean about making a judgment call between the seller and the vehicle? Well, here's an example. Let's say the seller has told you that the vehicle hasn't done much heavy towing. But when you go to look at the vehicle, you notice it's got an aftermarket brake controller and an upgraded tow hitch. Those two signs point to the fact that the vehicle has towed something heavy. A couple of examples of questions to ask a seller. Uh, what has the vehicle been used for? Why are you selling the vehicle? Do you have a service history for the vehicle and has it ever been in an accident? By asking these questions, you can start to get an understanding of the type of person the seller is. Then when it comes to look at the vehicle, you can compare their word against the condition and make a judgment call for yourself if it's a good buy or not. The thing with buying a secondhand four wheel drive is there's so much more involved than just looking at a vehicle. It's all about the psychology and the relationship between the seller, the vehicle and you, and you need to get as much information as you can on the condition of the vehicle, the type of person the seller is, and go from there. Unless you're looking for a project car you want to completely transform like an old Hilux or a GQ Patrol, you really need to keep an eye out for rust. In most cases, you'll find rust around the windscreen, the roof, and the bottom of doors. And once rust starts, it's really hard to stop it. If you see rust, our opinion is walk away, especially in a newer four-wheel drive. The part of the four-wheel drive that's the hardest to check and could cost you the most money in repairs is the engine. Here's a few basic checks you can do to get a pretty good indication of the engine's health. When you start the vehicle up to take it for a run, check for signs of excessive smoke. What does that show? In a modern diesel, white and black smoke indicate unburnt fuel and blue smoke is oil. With the engine, there are two areas that can be difficult to check and that's the injectors and the turbo. When you're looking over the engine, check around the turbo for leaking seals, but apart from that, short of taking the inlet piping off and checking for excessive movement in the compressor wheel, there isn't a lot you can do. With the injectors, when you take the vehicle for a drive, keep an eye out for excessive white smoke, and also listen out for any abnormal sounds like excessive knocking, because this could indicate the injectors are tired. With the engine hot, shut it off with the bonnet open and check if the fan stays spinning after shutdown as this can indicate a worn viscous fan clutch, which means the engine might have been running above optimum temperature without a working fan. A handy trick to gauge the overall condition of the engine is to do a check for excessive blow-by. To do that, start the vehicle and remove the oil filler cap. If it sits in one spot and bounces around a little bit, particularly on a diesel, that's fine and completely normal. But if the engine's running and you unscrew the cap and it blows away, that means there's excessive blow-by, which could indicate worn piston rings and a tired engine. That amount of blow-by is completely normal, particularly on a diesel engine, so the cap moving around a little bit is fine. But if you do that test and the cap wants to blow away and a lot of blow-by is coming out of the oil filler, that could be a sign that the engine is tired. Another thing to check on the oil filler cap and the dipstick is to look for signs of milky oil. Milky oil could indicate contamination from things like coolant as a result of a cracked head. On a diesel, it's normal for the oil to be black. Anyone who's ever changed diesel oil knows it goes black pretty much straight away. Take off the air filter and check for any dust past the clean side. Any dust past there means the engine could have dust in it, which wears everything out. Look for obvious leaks from rocker covers, Welsh plugs, the turbo and oil return lines. If it's an old diesel and it's not starting well, it might mean a few things like worn glow plugs, but it's a big indicator of low compression in the engine as well. Taking the vehicle for a test drive will give you the best indication of how the vehicle performs and if there's any issues internally, you're more likely going to hear them when you're driving. With an auto, listen and feel for a regular shifting or late shifting. When driving, do a few brake checks in a straight line when it's safe. 
and feel for shutter in the pedal and check to see if the vehicle doesn't pull left or right as this can indicate worn brake components or that a caliper might need an overhaul of working parts. You'd be surprised, but a lot of the time when people go to look at a four-wheel drive, they don't even check that the transfer case shifts as well. So when you do take the vehicle for a drive, put it into high range and low range and go through all the gears to make sure everything's working as it should. Take notice of how easily it shifts and selects into high range and low range. Drive through all the gears in low and high range to ensure the transfer case is operating as it should. The problem is it can be really hard to diagnose if your transmission or gearbox has any problems. We spoke to the experts at 360 gearboxes and diffs and wholesale automatic transmissions and both of them said whether you have an auto or a manual, if you can, try and drain a little bit of oil out to get an indication of the condition of the internals. Or if you're taking the vehicle for a roadworthy, ask them to change the gearbox oil or the transmission oil. It does sound a little bit excessive, but if you think about it, you're about to spend a lot of your hard-earned money on a vehicle. It pays to be fastidious in your checks. This vehicle's got some excellent bodywork and it doesn't have any mismatching paint on the panels, which is what you want. Most people will pay to do an online check of a full drive, but that will usually only tell you if the vehicle's been written off or not. It won't tell you if the vehicle's been in a minor accident or if it's been T-boned. So here's some telltale signs to look for to check if the vehicle you're looking at has been in a prank. Check for swell marks or dots or blemishes in the paint. Factory paint is perfect because it's applied by a robot, whereas it's much harder to get this effect with a spray gun. You also might see the colours don't quite match between the panels, which shows the panel has been re-sprayed. Look for sealing in areas under the guards and where panels attach to areas like the firewall. When it's smooth, it's an indication that it's been put on by a robot. Gaps in doors and the bonnet can also show that a panel's been replaced. If you do find a panel has been replaced, it might not be a deal breaker for you. But going back to that first point, if you find something like that and the owner didn't tell you about it, what else is he hiding? The first thing is to check the log books. Who's done them and has it been to the one mechanic? Are there servicing records missing? Spend the time checking the log books properly. Do the kilometers on the odometer match the quality of the vehicle? You'll be able to visually see the difference between a cared for four drive with 150,000 kilometers on the clock compared to one that's been hammered. You'll even see little things like the seats having tears and wear patches in them, the rubber on the clutch and brake pedals worn through. Just these little things show how hard of a life a four drive has had. On the other hand, there's also little things to show an owner has looked after it. Things like bonnet protectors and headlight protectors are a sign that the owner has cared for his four wheel drive. Check the aftermarket accessories and how they've been fitted. You'll see the difference between backyard wiring on a dual battery system and one that's been installed carefully and professionally. Our tip, if he's used tech screws to mount things instead of nuts and bolts, it's likely done by someone who takes shortcuts and doesn't know what they're doing. Next up is to check the driveline and chassis of the vehicle. This is an area that will often tell you if a vehicle has been used hard off-road, and because of that, it's also an area that a seller will often try to tidy up a bit to make it look more presentable. So here are some tricks to make sure you know what to look out for. Check the condition of the tail shafts and uni joints. Give them a shake with no load on them and feel for movement in the unis. Check the condition of the center bearing if it has one, and look out for weeping seals on the transfer case, diff housing, and pinion seals. Inspect hard to reach areas of the chassis with a torch. Look for visible signs of corrosion or new paint. If you do find new paint, ask the seller why there is new paint there, as he might have been trying to cover up rust or the chassis could have had some repair. If new paint or surface rust is located, inspect the rest of the chassis as much as possible. Look for sand on the top of chassis rails, on cross members, as this can indicate beach work and poor cleaning maintenance afterwards. Another tip is to look for gouges and marks on low hanging driveline components like the underside of diff housings, U-bolt plates and low shock mounts. Check out the condition of the bushes on the vehicle such as lower control arms, tie rod ends and radius arms. Have someone turn the wheel back and forth when the vehicle is stationary to load up steering linkages and check for movement. Look for faint tide marks around speaker pods and under door cards to give an indication if the vehicle has taken on water. Anyone who's done an outback trip knows that it's really hard to get rid of red dust. So if you suspect something, pull back a little bit of the carpet to see if you can find some. At the end of the day, you need to weigh it all up. If the engine is healthy, the gearbox is smooth, and the vehicle hasn't done a lot of full driving, you might not be so worried about that one panel that's been replaced. 
Focus on the parts of the four wheel drive that will cost the most to fix and if you're not sure, take a mate with you who knows his way around a vehicle or pay a mechanic to check it over. Often, four wheel drivers fall into the trap of buying the newest four wheel drive they can for their money. However, there's no denying the amount of kilometres, especially on modern diesels, is the most important thing to consider. We recommend looking at a lower kilometre older vehicle over a higher kilometre newer vehicle that's the same price. Vehicles with old technology are easier, cheaper and less trouble to repair. We want to hear from you. Did you manage to grab a bargain buying a used four-wheel drive? Or did you accidentally buy yourself a lemon? Tell us your buying used stories in the comments below. Cheers guys.